Hey everybody, this is our last story time for Ag Literacy Week, and I'm going to read this one. How did that get in my lunchbox? The Story of Food, written by Chris Butterworth and illustrated by Lucia Gagliotti. How did that get in my lunchbox? One of the best parts of the day is when you lift the lid of your lunchbox to see what's inside. Your parents have packed it with lots of tasty things to eat. They probably got it all, got all the food from a grocery store, but food doesn't grow in stores. So where did it come from before it was in the store? Just how did all this food get in your lunchbox? How did the bread in your sandwich get in your lunchbox? A farmer planted seeds in spring, and by summer, they'd grown into tall, waving wheat with fat, ripe grains at the tip of every stalk. The farmer cut the wheat with a giant combine harvester and sent it to a flour mill. Grains. The miller ground the grains into flour and trucks took the flour to a bakery. Yeast, sugar, and water. The baker mixed the flour with water, sugar, and yeast, kneaded it into a soft, squishy dough, and baked it in a very hot oven. Out came fresh loaves of bread, ready to send to the store. Take a bite of the bread in your sandwich. Mm-mm. Crusty on the outside and soft in the middle. How did that cheese in your lunch in your sandwich get in your lunchbox? Your cheese was once milk that came from a cow. A farmer milked the cows and a taker from the dairy farm came to collect the milk. In the dairy, cheese makers warmed up the milk and added bacteria to make it turn sour and thick. Then they added a substance the animal used to digest milk called rennet. And it changed again into bits called curds floating in whey. They drained off the whey, chopped up the rubbery curds, added some salt and pressed them into blocks. They stored the blocks for months until the cheese was ripe. Bite into your cheese. It's creamy and smooth, but tasty too, and tingly on your tongue. How did your tomatoes get in your lunchbox? Last summer, your tomatoes were growing in a big plastic tunnel full of tomato plants. The sun and the warmth made the plants grow tall and bloom with yellow flowers. As each flower died, a tiny green tomato fruit began to grow from its middle. Day by day, the plants sucked up water and the tomatoes swelled from green to orange to red. When bunches of ripe scarlet tomatoes dangled from the branches, the grower picked them, sorted them, packed them, and sent them to the store one in your mouth and squish the sweet sour juice out. How did your apple juice get in your lunchbox? Last spring, the apple trees in the orchard were full of flowers. In summer, tiny apple buds grew from each flower stalk. The buds kept growing and by autumn the trees were full of ripe sweet fruits. Pickers climbed into the trees and filled their bins with fruit. A truck took the bins to the juice factory where sorters threw out any rotten apples. Then a machine washed the rest and mashed them in a milling machine, seeds, skin and all. A huge press squeezed the mash till, its, till all its juice ran out. A heater warmed up the juice 
to kill off any germs and pour it into cartons. Suck hard on your straw to taste the apple tang. How did your carrots get in your lunchbox? Last spring, your carrots were growing in a field on a vegetable farm. You wouldn't have seen any carrots then, just long rows of feathery leaves. As the leaves grew taller in the summer sun, each carrot root pushed deeper into the earth, soaking up water and turning orange. By late summer, they had swelled so much that the top of each carrot poked out of the earth. Pickers pulled them up. Then the carrots were washed and packed into trucks. Bite into your carrot. See just how sweet and crunchy it tastes. How did the chocolate chip in your cookie get into your lunchbox? Cookies are made from flour, sugar, and butter, and this one's got chocolate chips in it. Chocolate starts off as a bean. Well, lots of beans, which grow in pods on a cocoa tree. The pods are picked from the tree. Then they're cut open and the beans are scooped out. These beans are spread out and left to dry in the sun. The dried beans are taken to a factory, sometimes on the other side of the world. In the factory, they're cleaned, roasted, and ground into a thick and sticky paste. Sugar is added is mixed in, so the paste gets sweeter, but it's still gritty. So it's squeezed, stirred, melted, and cooled. Finally, the chocolate is molded into blocks. These are made into little chips that will melt in your mouth all over again. How did your clementine get into your lunchbox? Early in the summer, the trees in the clementine grove were full of sweet smelling waxy flowers. As the flowers died, a tiny green clementine berry began to grow out of each one. The clementine swelled in the warm sun, turning from green to yellow. By the time cooler winter weather arrived, the clementines had turned orange and were so heavy and full of juice that they made the branches droop. Pickers climbed ladders to reach them. They had to wear gloves so they didn't bruise the tender fruit inside the skin. They washed them and packed them and the growers sent the boxes and trucks to the market. It's easy to peel a clementine. Then all you have to do is pop the juicy pieces in your mouth and bite. Most clementines are seedless. You've eaten it all from the first bite of bread to that last piece of fruit. It came from fields and farms, from orchards and groves, and from dairies. So many people helped bring it to you. Farmers and bakers, cheese and chocolate makers, pickers, packers, and truck drivers. And now it's all in your stomach, starting to do the job that food does helping you grow taller and stronger and giving you get up and go. You need more than lunch to make you grow and keep you healthy. Every day you need to choose food from each of the sections on this plate. Most of your food should come from the fruits and vegetables and carbohydrates section. Carbohydrates, these foods fill you up fast and give you the energy to keep going. Fruits and vegetables, your body needs lots of these to keep you healthy. These foods are just as important as carbohydrates, fruits and vegetables, but your body doesn't need as much of them. Protein, these are your bodybuilders to help you grow those extra inches. Dairy, these are the bone builders they also help your teeth grow strong. Then there's, then there's the stuff you eat for a treat. Just a little of these is enough. Food.
food facts. Your body is made mostly of water, so you need at least six drinks a day to keep yourself topped up. Most of these drinks should be water, not soda, which has lots of sugar in it. Your body is growing all the time, even when you're asleep. So remember, don't skip breakfast. It gets your body through the day. Too much sitting around won't keep your body healthy. It doesn't matter whether you chase a ball, your dog, or your friends. You spend about an hour, but spend about an hour a day on the move. It's good to eat five different kinds of fruits and vegetables every day. Why not try a new one this week? Thanks for letting me spend a little extra time with you today. Um, don't forget to visit the children's area for a take and make farm craft that has a little barnyard that you can put your animals in. It also has a fact sheet. So while you're coloring those animals, uh, maybe mom or dad or grandma or grandpa can read those facts about the animals that you're making. Um, also, don't forget to stop in our juvenile section and help us celebrate um, dairy back there, making a, a dairy cart and birdhouse. Um, also, the adult area also has some books, um, videos, and some farm facts back there to, for you to enjoy. Thanks for spending some time with us.